learned already that names don't constitute knowledge, that they're knowing the name of something. That's caused me a certain trouble since, because I refuse to learn the name of anything. So when someone comes in and says, uh, you got any explanation for the Fitzclonan experiment? I says, what, what, what's that? He says, you know, that the long-lived K meson disintegrates into two pies. Oh, oh, yes, now I know. But I never know the names of things. What he forgot to tell me was that the knowing the names of things is useful if you want to talk to somebody else. <laughs> so you tell him what you're talking about. But the basic principle of knowing about something rather than just knowing its name is something that you stuck to, is it? Yes, of course. It's, well, you have to learn. These are kind of disciplines in the field of science that you have to learn. That to know when you know and when you don't know and what it is you know and what it is you don't know. And it's, uh, you've got to be very careful not to confuse yourself. Hi guys, how are you? Mind this one, Titanium. Welcome back to Real Macro Economics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Real Macro and Patreon.com slash BKC. Bare Knuckle Charting. And this is what you are observing right now, where we only care about uh, what the price action is doing. And by uh, understanding how price moves on a chart, very simple, uh, we can determine what the likely next move is going to be. And I've been using this uh, for quite some time, and it's been very uh, profitable for me. And um, I'm going to show you what appears to be happening in the markets. And, and I, uh, I titled this video, The Biggest Threat to the Economy and the Markets. Why? Why am I saying something like that? Well, uh, as we all know, we, we spent about a trillion dollars last year uh, pumping the markets, the economy. And uh, it has not been uh, very productive, okay? Um, since the summer of 2018 till today, uh, the economy has done nothing, uh, has slowed, and uh, the markets have done nothing. They've slowed, despite this fuckery, because that's what it is, it's fuckery, uh, showing that the NDX is up, I don't know, 24, 25%, if you include dividends, 26, whatever it is. Uh, it makes it makes it appear as if we gained something, but the reality is we we have not uh, really uh, pushed to new all-time highs that have been sustained, and uh, this has led to a sideways market, something that I called uh, once we started to to drop a while back. So um, this is this is what's going on in the markets right now. We had a lot of a lot of fucking pumping of the markets uh, this past week. Uh, 80 billion of not QE, organic balance sheet uh, expansion, whatever they want to call it. Um, repos, 82 billion this week alone. Multiple rate hikes. Trump pumping up the market, uh, you know, on Twitter every day. Uh, partial deal, which means nothing uh, for China. Uh, progression in Brexit, and still, you know, nothing happened. Uh, well, nothing materially happened. I mean, it, it went up, what, uh, 6% from the bottom of August 3rd. Okay, so there was a there was a nice little run in the market, but uh, it does very little to change uh, the global economy. Okay, there's nothing material that you can tangibly touch and say, okay, now I know what, what's going on and so forth. You know, we're hoping for fucking soybeans to save us or whatever. So, um, when you start to lose the market and the market starts to, to sell off, that's part of the leading indicator. Okay, it starts to, to tip it over and um, over the edge, if you will. Because the, the leading indicator right now is more or less flat, and if the market goes, the leading indicator will start to decline. Okay. Now, uh, along with the 80 billion and 82 billion this week alone, and um, multiple rate cuts and trillion dollar deficits, and all this wonderful, you know, we love each other China stuff, um, the economy is not improving. The market is tired, so we're either expecting that the market will go higher because of multiple expansion, or uh, and multiple expansion is you'll pay more and more for the same amount of earnings. Okay, multiple expansion or earnings expansion. Earnings have been coming in flat to weak, 
so there's nothing there, at least for now. Maybe next quarter, I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody knows what's going to happen. But for right now, uh, we can forget about earnings and multiple. You had every chance to do it uh, with all these wonderful things, <laughs> supposedly, uh, that are supposed to push the market up, and they haven't. Okay, so once you get the market going south, and people start losing that uh, sensation of the wealth effect, okay, then things are, are, are going to get a little bit uglier because the the sentiment for uh, consumers, which is already starting to decline, uh, will become progressively worse. Okay, they'll hear a lot of negative things about stocks and what's going on in the economy, and then that affects uh, their sentiment and the wealth effect. And that's why something as small as this little 6% move in the market, which is not small, but uh, in the grand scheme of things, we've been, you know, within this range now for over a year. Something small as this little bear flag um, is a danger to the market and the economy. So we have a full one, two, three move. That means that this is validated. This whole structure is validated so long as this continues to uh, decline a little bit more and it has to hold okay so this is the only caveat because we never know when a wave will be finished okay we can have a little pullback and then continue on higher uh, there's, there's, there's rules that we have but for right now we know that it's broken the trend line we know that this is a uh, what we call a tight, tight, tight. When it gets really tight, usually what happens is you have a fast move the other direction. All right. Now, if this does confirm and starts to come down, and this is now a valid structure, a valid F flag, there's a 70% chance that this will ultimately resolve to the downside. Okay. And if this goes, if this structure starts to decline, and we know it's a 6% decline. Uh, then it's going to lead us to uh, bigger problems. So here's what I mean. This is what we were just looking at right here, right now, on the previous uh, slide. And, and you can see the one, two, three up. And if this starts to fail, then we're coming back down to this trend line, which is another rising wedge. And the rising wedge, wedge typically resolves to the downside. That's what usually happens. So we can assume that if this starts to break down, it's probably going to start breaking down this structure here. And if it does, then we have certain uh, targets that it will meet. Uh, but ultimately, we're looking for it to test down here, which is 66.50. If this starts to test this area, then there's a very good uh, chance we're going to go much lower. Okay, so that's why this little stupid seemingly meaningless little flag uh, has uh, big implications. Now, on top of the rising wedge, what you also have is the little head and shoulders going. Um, and this is um, confirming that, you know, things are not looking very well. Okay. Uh, and this is what I mean. Uh, if you go back to 2018 in the summer, okay, we've, we've done nothing absolutely nothing so you put it all together uh, you get the, the the rising wedge you get the smaller wedge uh, I'm sorry the smaller bull flag you got the head and shoulders you got the um, lower highs okay so we need to know what's going to happen this week we need to know if this is going to hook over okay and then start breaking down and then we'll start looking for these targets in the months ahead or is it going to continue to go uh, much higher? All right, and it can it can literally break this trend line and still be bearish. Okay, we can come all the way up to uh, 8,200, and that's fine. And we'll make new all-time highs, and everything will look great. But if it starts to turn, then you can get that move to the downside. So we're not out of the woods, even if it does make new higher highs. What would make it uh, very bullish is if it broke. If it broke through here, and then then we go off to euphoria land, okay? But we're not there yet. So when you start seeing that the there's a gap in here that is not filled, 
that is negative okay that's a sign of weakness so if this starts to, to roll over this becomes very valid right and then we go we go uh, on down so that's what I'm looking at uh, that's why I, I named this video uh, the biggest threat to the economy and the markets uh, is this little bear flag right in here okay because it has much larger implications so zooming back in um, there wasn't enough time on Monday to to see what this is what this means okay uh, it did break down was this just profit taking or was this a sign of things to come we cannot tell we cannot tell so we gotta wait all right so that's what we're going to be looking at uh, early tomorrow tomorrow and um, we'll go from there all right so that's it uh, thank you for your time come down to patreon.com slash real macro to get the more inside uh, info uh, the trade setups what trades I'm gonna make and how to read charts all right take care bye bye before this battle is over the world will know that few stood against many